you're digging a hole and then these like monsters or alligators are coming at you to get out of it though you have to stick a hose to them and blow them up it's a basically a tire inflator you're ripping right they'll kill them with a hose attached to their asses <laughs> until they explode welcome to another episode of the law offices of quibble squabble and bicker on this june 29th 2022 an auspicious 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 <laughs> Is that like delicious? Apparently, I can't speak delicious. with uh, multi-syllabic words anymore. An delicious. auspicious occasion because it's the day before June thirtieth, two thousand and twenty-two. That's what makes it special. It's also the day after my dad's birthday. But anyway, before we get too much further, I should explain to you all that uh, my name is Matt. Greg is uh, to my right on the screen, and Brendan is below me on the screen. But it may all look different to the rest of you um, when uh, you look at this. Our client for today is Video Games Killed the Pinball Star. Behold, trapped in a hellscape of their own invention, socially unaware old white men bound by the pretense of being fake lawyers yet knowing no law, no exquisite Latin terminology, they are inexplicably compelled to quibble over minutia, squabble over triflings and bicker like those who value their backyards far too highly without even knowing the difference between an easement and an alleyway. At this very moment, you have entered the heart of the law offices of quibble, squabble, and bicker. Let's get started. New from Matt Hell, a game so revolutionary, it could only be called Beep Boop. There has never been anything like it. Watch as Timmy and Mary play the groundbreaking game Beep Boop. Beep. Boop. <laughs> Beep. Boop. <laughs> it's so simple, yet so amazing. Kids between the ages of three and a half and four are going wild for beep boop. First you beep, then you boop. Scientists are saying that there are no studies to corroborate anything regarding beep boop. That's astounding. You might ask, what is beep boop? And you'd be right to do so. With beep boop, you'll beep boop today. Only available at all retail outlets that carry beep boop. I love friends. you so much, Matt Bracci. <laughs> what? That was so, I love you. That was so fucking insane. But it was so funny. <laughs> it was funny. Beep boop. I like Beep it. boop. <laughs> what are you talking about? I want to play. <laughs> Let's play um, on FaceTime when we're done with the podcast. <laughs> so Beep. they figure out what it is. <laughs> Beep boop. I, I think I got it. I think I can figure it out. My wife overheard me recording it. and She said she totally lost it when she heard me do... <laughs> Like the voices of the kids or something like that. No, it was when it was uh, three and a half to four year olds. About well, three and a half to four. Yeah. So that's anyway. my favorite sponsor ever. <laughs> it's a good one. It's your favorite. Oh, that's just sad. It was ridiculous. Oh. I love it. <laughs> well, since we don't have a guest today, we should just get right into our client for the day, which is Video Games Killed the Pinball Star. Um, which makes it kind of a more all-encompassing uh, topic regarding the the death of pinball. Well, I guess not really the death of pinball because pinball still has some popularity, but where pinball was no longer the main source of entertainment at arcades, I guess. Or juvenile delinquents. Right. Well, you know, older delinquents. Since I'm drinking well. sake today, I'd like to mention it might have also been the death of Pachinko. I don't know that there was a lot of pachinko arcades in the United States, Greg. That no, but there were in Japan, and I bet Japan, I bet they went away too. I think there's still major pachinko arcades in Japan because that's really? gambling. Oh, because it's gambling, yeah. Right, exactly. But we used to play it for fun. I mean, I don't. My friends, certain friends, had a machine, and we were so enthralled by it. It was so exotic and crazy. It was like, but it wasn't as fun as pinball. Right, because you didn't have any control over it. Yeah, that's the thing. Where you just, just shut up goes. all the balls, just drop all over the place, and they go wherever. It's like a game of chance, which is why it's good for gambling. Mm -hmm. So, are you trying to show us something with your sake cup, Greg? Why don't you describe it, describe it to the listeners out there, Greg? It's an erotic, ancient erotic Japanese art. And you can see the woman's booby. Right yeah. now, he has his penis in the end of the cup, is what he's got. <laughs> it would fit. For, the, sure for those of you. Is that tea? Size. Are we sure it's tea? Are we sure it's tea? <laughs> it's not tea, it's sake. 
are we sure it's sake then? We're not sure it's of anything. Warm. It could be it's lube warm. for all we know. It could be. We don't know that it's warm either. That's true. It is warm. <laughs> it's that shit sake that you got to warm up. It's, that's, it's, it's really nasty if you don't warm it up. So <laughs> even though it's you, sweat, you Do you I'm warm sweat. it up in the microwave? Yeah. No, he puts like, it under his the, armpits. The right way. Yeah. In a microwave. <laughs> <laughs> microwave. I don't have a sake setting on mine. I'm going to have to check that out. He put it under the left boob of Andre the Giant. <laughs> I could do it under my own boob. I'm getting to, some Andre the Giant sized boobs. To, to get it to at least room boob temperature. Anyway, <laughs> so but I was doing a little bit of research into this and I found that the first video game was actually made in the 50s, which was kind of surprising to find out. But that was like the early days of computing, but th that wasn't necessarily, um, obviously, to uh, open to the general public, right? It was mainly for the hardcore computer nerds back in the day. Would it actually have moving graphics, or was it more like type in ten if you want to go left? Or it was it was like a moving graphic, but it would have been on like some gigantic screen, probably. I so would you think. would actually control a. Uh, a moving you know i didn't i didn't delve into the history of it that deeply greg so i'm sorry i can't answer your question for you however there is something that that's called google that you could use to find more sure. details if you want including the person incur, including the person who invented it um who goes by the name spanky that's wow. his uh his official I read title about, i heard about this on that video game documentary that what was it like the games that made us or something like that it was yeah. a whole history of video games. And they said that these college kids, they were all like engineering students, whatever. They would just freak out over like fight for the right to play. Like after the school had closed, they had all set it up and they would just, it was so much fun. And that's the thing. When did you guys games. first become aware of uh, video games? When did it come into your peripheral? Um, it could be Walt Disney World. I went when I was like nine and they had on Main Street, they had an arcade and it had. But I think I knew about Pong before that. I think we might have Pong came on seventy three, yeah. right, or seventy two. It was like yeah. seventy one, seventy two, somewhere around there. Yeah, and it I, was an arc. It I was an arcade Pong. game. Yeah. yeah, I don't remember ever seeing it out. I my dad bought a machine. I don't oh. remember seeing a Pong arcade game. You know. Yeah, the first video game was Atari, and it was like Pong and Tank and those games. Yeah, that's what I remember. I don't remember seeing an arcade. Uh, so probably freshman year of high school before I actually went into a place there was a place that had multiple games and that sort of thing. Well, I know that I was really into pinball um, back around when I was in my preteen to early teen years. Um, was that because you saw your mother having sex with another man and they told you that you didn't see anything or hear anything? Yeah. <laughs> Or smell anything. People followed me around for years and I told them to stick a cork in their mouth. You didn't so, smell it. For those of you who are not familiar with the band The Who, this is an entire reference to a rock opera called Tommy. That's where Greg is getting that from. So, yeah, our, our younger listeners think we're just really strung out on drugs. They don't know what the hell we're talking about. <laughs> strung out on what? sake. God, how drunk is that guy? What's he talking that's about? That's sake strong. He gets pretty drunk, that's I gotta say. That sounds terrible. 300 <laughs> proof sake I got. 300 proof? I was in 300 proof. I don't know how, how it can get that high, Greg. It burns a hole in your stomach. It's for a sip. <laughs> just rocks it burns a hole through the glass that it's in. It yeah. sends you back in time and just keeps getting you drunk three three times more. It turns me yeah, into I mean, as, as much as people in the world like to say they do things like 300% or 1,000%, you really can't do more than 100%. So. That's the whole point of 100%. But 200 so if you have proof. 200 proof is as, as high as it can go. You can't go higher than 200 proof, Greg. I can't. <laughs> you'll I you'll up pickle to yourself. It. You'll be your I own pickle jar. I reject your pedestrian ideas about science. <laughs> I'm a visionary. I'm like Frankenstein. You're, like beep, Frankenstein. you're like beep boop. No scientist can corroborate anything you're saying. Dr. Beep Boop, if you Beep please. Boop. <laughs> Beep Boop. Beep Boop. No, you, you lost. You didn't say no. Boop. That's, I you did lost. say Boop. You lost the you, point. You said Beep. You guys are actually making up the rules right now? For the yeah, I said 
boop. You said beep. I think beep. beep. And I said boop. I think you said beep. Sorry. No. I heard wrong. You heard wrong. I remember Judge? putting that thing together. And when I was finished, I went, you know, there's there really is something wrong with me. Because I know. That's why I love you. That was insane. How long did you just come up with that? Like 10 minutes ago, you were like, I'll just come up with the first thing in my head. Beep, boop. Well, that's pretty much how I do everything is I just start typing something out and it's whatever I wind up why whatever I wind up with. Are you typing beep boop? I don't do I don't I do hardly any editing and uh it's all pretty much sometimes I'm just doing it, you know, off the cuff into the microphone, depending upon my mood. If you put but, a thousand monkeys in front of a thousand typewriters, they would and never come up with beep boop. I actually have a thousand monkeys living within me, and that's how we get all of this creativity that makes no sense. So anyway, so I remember anyway. um we had a bowling alley where I lived, and I was in either my eighth grade or freshman year um of school, and um I remember Space Invaders and a couple of Asteroids and I think Pac-Man was another one of the games that was had just come out into the arcade and um, I suddenly didn't have a desire to play pinball anymore. And I used to play a lot of pinball. I mean, I, I used to cheat with pinball. I used to put like matchbooks underneath the legs of the pinball games so that we could make the, uh, the table even out a little bit so that the ball wouldn't drain uh, too quickly. Oh, yeah. So. That's that's hard, that, that, what was that's that, hard Greg? To do with the asteroids? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Although we had was... a weird thing that happened with our Space Invaders machine at this bowling alley, where if you started pushing in the coin return, you would start getting free credits, free games for Space Invaders. Oh, so we would be there f all freaking day. Playing Space Invaders. Did you get really for, good? Were you for amazing free. Invaders? Um, I don't know. I mean, I got to a certain point with a lot of games where I just couldn't get any better. I just wasn't that good at, at terms of uh, hand eye coordination. So I would get good at some games and I would be better at other. My, like my brother was a huge Centipede fan, so mm. much so as an adult, he wound up buying his own Centipede game. So he was really good at that. No, but there was always like a. What's that, Sorry, Greg? Let me just say real quick, I love Centipede because it just had the rapid fire. You just hold the button down and your bullets just go. Yes, there was like a weird fascination to Centipede because of that yeah. aspect of it, you know, where, where you weren't didn't have to just button push. You could hold the, the button down and it would do it for you. You know, but um I was kind of good at that, but you know, you're never as good as the really good players, you know. It's like you try to get that high score, and then some guy comes along and just wipes it out because they're fully obsessed with playing. I know games. that guy, the guy in the denim jacket who smokes cigarettes way before everyone else. It's that kid at the arcade. <laughs> that guy. His name's like Corey the guy from Bad News Bears. Yeah, yeah. Some guy. later he sold you pot for the first time. That guy. Yeah, yeah he's got a video. Game I remember Carol. that guy. <laughs> He didn't sell it to me, though. He just gave it to me to get me hooked. Oh, well, Because those guys skipped school all day, and they went to the arcade and played video games, and they were all good. <laughs> that was me in college. So, yeah, I, that was me. I played foosball in college to, in, to skip school. That's but an that's, actual, uh, yeah. like, sport almost. It takes, like, some... You're actually doing something, foosball. <laughs> yeah, but then, they, they're also guys who are incredibly good at... I mean, I was good player. I was better than the average players, so... I was like slightly above average, so I could beat most normal people at foosball. But then there was the next level, and they would kick my ass every time. You know, I would like hold my own for maybe a couple of minutes, and they would just like wipe me out. And I'm like, eh, this isn't fun for me. You know, but so the the average guys, we would play a lot of foosball, try to get better, and then occasionally the ringer would show up, who would could like hit a foosball over the heads of the foosball players and into your goal and there wasn't really much you could do about it <laughs> would you uh, gamble on these games would you bet no i was never a better i learned my lesson i think when we had a pool table in our basement when i was around 10 or 11 years old and uh i think we had like a friend or two who was there and so we bet on some games and i won and they never paid me back and i went well i know i would have paid if i had lost so 
I don't think I want to get into this betting thing for the future. It would have been a better story if your dad would pay you, play you, and then take your allowance away when he won. Like, you don't get allowance again. Well, we never got allowance, Greg. <laughs> okay, I didn't either. Yeah. Well, I mean, let me let me rephrase that. Well, we, uh, we, we got a, we got we got cigarettes. You know, like prison. <laughs> That's what we got in my house. And good. You took out the garbage and your rake to leave. You get three cigarettes. There's a smoke for <laughs> you, prison. Brendan. No, um, when I was very young, like kindergarten, first or second grade, or before second grade, we had allowance. I remember that because my brother stole money from my dad's wallet. And um, we went to some local little league baseball game and spent it on candy or whatever. Then we come back and I, I don't think I realized he had taken it from my dad's wallet. Um, we come back and my dad is notice, noticeably upset about something. And uh, it turns out he realized that um, someone had stolen money from the no wallet. No allowance ever for anyone. And that's basically what happened. We were never that's given we were never given allowance. What do you mean it wasn't fair? It's just What you did know, you do? You didn't do shit. You I apparently stole. spent money that wasn't mine. So Yeah. He was an accomplice, at least. I, basically. Yeah, you know, I was the, the 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 younger sibling who went, okay. I was oh, I had yeah. candy too. <laughs> Either way, I never asked for allowance again. So normally if my dad said something, I was I just fell along with it and went, Yes, sir, and that's the way it went, you know. But uh and that continued really through most of my life. You know what a spoiled rich kid I was like when Brendan said boo hoo, I was like, No, my parents just bought me anything I wanted. Like I'd go to the comic store. Just bring, I'd get whatever I wanted, 20 comments. Okay, mom, pay for it. Okay. So I didn't get allowance, but I pretty much got all free comics. Yeah. I didn't have to pay for them. Yeah, see, my background was was weird because on the one side of the family, you know, I was raised by a Jewish American princess, you know, who came from like kind of an upper middle class family because my grandfather was a dentist. And then on my dad's side of the family, it was hillbillies and, you know, shooting squirrel for food so <laughs> exactly so we had this dichotomy of a mindset where you know you have to be really thrifty or you have to spend too much money so it's like i think that's what ruined me financially for later years where i just made horrible financial decisions along the way overcome the 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 the, the dragon push two different ideas in your yeah, head. Yeah, because you have the deprivation, but then you have the money to handle the deprivation, but then the money wasn't deserved, so you had to like find a way to get free money somehow, but without stealing. Right. You know, or you'd waste the money because it wasn't yours, yours anyway. Yeah. You didn't it was, deserve it. Yeah. It's a whole sure. communist perspective to a certain <laughs> extent, you know. It's like everything belonged to me, but nothing belonged to me. Even though I grew up like that, I was always cheap as hell. Even as a kid, like I felt bad about my parents spending money on me. I would be like, "Oh, should I should I get this third comic or fourth comic?" I was I don't know where it came from because I was spoiled, rotten, and yeah. yet I've been such a cheap motherfucker my whole life. I'm like Uncle Scrooge in the comic books. I'm just always like I'm like taking home napkins from restaurants, and you know, used <laughs> napkins. Uh, if they're used to dry your hands, which are clean. I, I think that was your mom. original video game, wasn't it? it was like the uh, the napkin theft game. <laughs> yeah, it's like Burger Time. You have to go to Burger. It's just time. napkins. You know the napkins. <laughs> exactly. You're oh, I did. I did want to have like some going. music playing while we were doing this. So uh, let me uh, let me see. Oh, was it going to be eight bit music? What's that? Eight bit music scores. Like it was. Something. It was going to be something like that. So let me see if I can. If I can find where, what I did with it, just so we can have it in the background playing. So uh, here we go. Can you hear that? Every time I say like a bad joke, you should have the. Let me turn the volume down. We'll just have it running the whole time. Because it's going to change up, too. There we go. I'm punching the stars above me. <laughs> I think if I ever went completely insane, that's what would be playing in my brain. I know. <laughs> I'd just be walking around. You'd be talking, talking to, to Brendan. Me. Brendan, what year is it? You'd be like, do, 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 do. Dude, Dig Dug. What did he say? <laughs> he just said, he keeps saying Dig Dug. No one knows what the hell he's talking about. Oh, that was such a bizarre game. That was oh, like was... one of the weirdest freaking games. Yeah. You know, I mean, like, the concept of it is 
you're digging a hole and then these like monsters or alligators are coming at you to get out of it though you have to stick a hose to them and blow them up it's a basically a tire inflator you're running <laughs> right. it's, it's a tire like, inflator yeah it's like who a... came up with it they're like this is how they'll kill them they'll kill them with a hose attached to their asses until they <laughs> explode and, you know, oh, yeah. modern-day Dig Dug should actually get really inventive with the graphics, though. They should have, like, oh, the bowels so shooting out and the eyeballs shooting off into different directions. And uh, that would have been a fascinating so, but, one. But, but at the meeting, they got to wait. Okay, so I got it. I got on the blowing up thing. But they're digging holes? <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> it's, like, it's like not Donkey Kong. It's like down under a calm and they're like yeah think, yeah now you get it we have to call earth force for that that's <laughs> that's not kosher that is where earth force got its original start was from yeah dig fighting dug. dig dug and those what were they called the monsters like pukas or something they had a weird name the little uh, gremlins down there I, yeah maybe i don't remember the names of them um but i do remember like being really f back in the day just being really fascinated by space invaders but i, I remember playing asteroids and not really being into asteroids because it was too complicated for me. I loved asteroids because you go to the next screen, you could just shoot up and, and uh, like it was an endless loop. If you, yeah, if that you was the problem that I had with it, though. Was just that keep going. You couldn't control it well because it was in that like a gravity well, so the yeah. ship was always like loosely floating somewhere. You had to stop. You had to turn around and hit the retro jets. Yeah, you know? I didn't like that part of it. I kind of liked the more fixed gaming yeah. platforms. So when Donkey Kong came out, I was living in the Philippines. And so we didn't have Donkey Kong. We had Donkey King was the name of it for some reason. Because they didn't know what King Kong was? Maybe? I don't know. It was on the military base, which is an American military base. So you got me. But all I do know is that I had a summer job that year that it came out. And I was late nearly every day to that summer job for at least an hour because I would go to the bowling alley. I always wanted bowling alley arcades. I went to the bowling alley arcade here as well and i played donkey kong before i would go to work and i would just get into that it. job How did, why didn't they fire you they eventually did yes yeah. they eventually I, I was working for at the time uh military affiliated radio system did they, but call they you didn't on? they didn't know i was playing video games for me it was always i had bowel issues so, so i was always, i was really late because <laughs> like of my, guy. my hey, intestines hey. Is that Matt guy with the shit problem? Is he's late again with the shits? Oh, we gotta talk to him. We can't keep putting this off. I know. It actually enjoyed much. the job too, but anyway. So I wound up having to go get another one for the summer. It's not like we got a lot of money. We got a Did they dollar. Call you and Honky a... Kong there. That's a we... <laughs> yeah. Like here comes Honky Kong. Yeah, that's what they called me. I knew it. No, I think they just said it's like another freaking teenager blowing whatever little money he has on this game. Because back then there was this trick he could do with the Donkey Kong. I mean, because that's when Mario was also part of Donkey Kong. Or Donkey King, I, I should say. Again, for me it was Donkey King. And where you could jump off the right-hand side of the platform, if you did it backwards, you could actually skip the entire level and go on to the next level. It was some weird glitch in the system, so... I think I've already told you guys on this show about the Galaga glitch. I don't know why it came up, but I know the Galaga glitch since I was in my 20s. And What's the Galaga glitch, Greg? Well, there's uh, something you do in the first round. It's still, it's very boring. But once you do it, you do this thing where you don't you don't kill the last two guys to the left, I think. Uh. Who come at you, and then you let them come at you for like four minutes. And you'll notice they stop dropping missiles. And after a while, you can kill them. The rest of the game, no missiles get dropped. It's still kind of hard because there's still like five guys going, Ooh, coming out of you, but no missiles. Wait, what was that sound that you made again? Ooh. <laughs> they were ghost missiles. They were disco missiles. Disco jihad. Disco jihad missiles. They were, we're going to blow you up. Oh, we're going to blow you up. Ooh, infidel. <laughs> <laughs> so what was your fa of for the all the years you played arcade games what would you say was your favorite arcade game i rarely played arcade games because i was a cheapskate so when i got atari i played video games a lot so i love space videos the first two weeks i got it it was for months no maybe months well you're talking about it as a home game i'm talking about it as I an, mean, arc I never, an arcade game 
I told oh, you guys I, about just a month ago about the joust nervous breakdown I had. So that was probably the one I played the most in our case. Joust, that's one of the joust. that you were on like uh, eagles or uh, something, uh, right? Ostriches, no, ostriches. Yeah, ostrich, yeah. That's well, another I, bizarre freaking game. That's a bizarre game. <laughs> I didn't yeah, get course. into I didn't get into joust and dig dug until I was lost in a different world of substances. Now, mine was missile command. <laughs> I was I was king of missile command. And the, the, the missile the command that was like when you had a ball, ball right? You had and a the ball, ball and you and the things would shoot down onto you, and you had to like create like a a, a dome of lasers or something, right? Well, your, your your bomb, you'd hit a bomb, and then it would like give like a an inch or two of just destroy everything in it. And yeah. It'd go like explode. And then things got a little more complicated. Then Defender came out. Yeah, oh, I liked Defender. Defender. Yeah. Fuck, that game was like, that always gave me like um, seizures. Like near <laughs> the end when there's like 17 things going, this is vibrating around you. Oh. The little Ooh, people falling. Crazy. Yeah, it was it was gnarly that game. And Stargate. Stargate was the better sequel. No, I don't Stargate remember was Stargate. I don't, I don't it was Defender, Stargate. but with more fancy bells and whistles. Like, I seem to remember some game, I think it was called Scramble or something like that. It was similar to Defender, but you had to go through like a narrow like hallways and things at the end as you're flying your ship. And uh, anyway, I guess it's not ringing a bell for anybody. I can't remember if that's the exact name or not. What was the first game that did the semi three dimensional thing of a Xerox? Had a weird name. It was the first time a video game was on. Thank you, Zaxxon. was the first time a game wasn't just you're looking at a flat two-dimensional thing. You were kind of going in this, you know, three-dimensional. You was diagonal, basically. You were looking at it from an angle. And that blew me away. I was like, whoa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Remember, uh, here we go. Cuber. For three, I was going to say exactly Cuber. what Brenda just said. Oh, yeah. Cuber. Cuber's two-dimensional, yeah. The first three. That, that, I tell you, I lost so much money on that stupid game because I would always jump off the back by accident. <laughs> and be like, oh, I've killed Cubert again. He's like he's constantly totally he's to constantly top. killing <laughs> himself. It's like I, boom, boom, boom. Oh, damn it! I, recently, I wonder what a child recently, psychiatrist would have said about that man. Yeah, I recently played a, a video game with my daughter on Roblox, which is big, like gaming platform or something. On, it's like it's a Minecraft thing or something, right? It's kind of, they look like, their people look like little Lego people, and then you have to okay. make your little Lego character, and then you can play different games. And one of them was a game where there was a spider and you had to run away, and this other was this. Anyway, my point is, like, you with Hubert, we did play this space game, and it was kind of trippy geometry, and I just kept with going, like, oh, I was always falling <laughs> off the planet. Like, yeah, I can't Mario play games life. with my kids because they ask. Yeah, they kick your ass. Constantly with things. I'm like... I think for me, where I, I turned away from the console games when Intellivision came around. Because before that, it was Atari, you had a joystick and a button. I'm like, I could handle a joystick and a button. That's why I didn't like Asteroids, too, because Asteroids had too many buttons. You know, I like the ones where it was like a joystick and a button. And man, I would play games so much, I would get blisters on the side of my fingers. I remember that, yeah. You know, I have to be like, mm -hmm. I should probably go home. No, I must spend more money I don't actually earn. So, <laughs> and. But when you added these extra buttons, I would get confused. And, you know, then as, ar as arcade games started to get a little more complicated, and you had, like, these special moves, like, with the, the fighting-type games. Oh, yeah, you know? Nintendo, with, like, the four buttons and, like, hold down A, B, and depress C. And yeah, and, special... and now they're ridiculous. You know, yeah. now there's, yeah. like, extra buttons. And I'm like, I, I don't want to do all of this. I don't want to do all of this work. I don't know what Freud would again. say about this, but I love joystick games. I mean, it was so, so satisfying just sitting there going... One button and a joystick is going. Tch, 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 tch. I'm telling you, that's that's where the country went wrong. Was we stopped accepting it was one joystick and one button. <laughs> Once you stand it had all kinds of buttons and all kinds of levers and it's other slippery joystick. slope. I know. Next thing you know, it's same-sex marriages. It's all because of that. <laughs> yeah. It's one Next joystick, one have button. To ban abortions. They you felt like there was two buttons. You know. You can marry a donkey soon. That's right. Uh, I think button, you can do it now. Joystick Greg. button. I think you can actually marry a donkey now if you want to. So, do you guys know about this one game, which I almost like think I dreamt it, but my friends will verify this. There was a video game in the arcade in Tucson in the late 80s called Chiller, and it was Chiller. like a horror-based game. The first screen was like a torture chamber, and 
you'd have to shoot. It was a gun game. It actually had a mounted rifle on the video game. And you would, like, say, shoot the string that made the guillotine fall on the guy's head and the head you know this primitive graphics yeah i didn't really like shooting games either because fall. again no, i didn't either but this was a horror game it was like total like gory and so there'd be like scenes where there was a woman in the graveyard buried up to her waist and she could like really badly draw just like no no ooh. No. Well, that reminds then, me. There was an arcade wait, game wait, where they had like killer though. clowns that would come after you. I remember They'd, that. They'd like game. run after you and like wait, stab you, you with shoot knives. Her once. You shoot her once, and her shirt comes off, and you can see these badly drawn, sixteen bit boobs. Then you shoot her again. Her head comes off. And you see like a little bit of red. I mean, it was, the graphics weren't good enough to be that gory, but they were implied. And I, me and my friends played this game all the time, and we were like, "How come this isn't in the news?" Like why? There's a video game where you can see boobies. I, I I knew the gore was fine in America. The gore wouldn't bother anyone. Well, some, but the boobies scene—it was like that's because they're that? square. They weren't actually round. They, they, they were kind of square. They, they, they were like. Um, but you know, sixteen-bit boobies. I think was, was the was, nickname was, for my first girlfriend. That's what? a good. <laughs> that's a good techno band name. <laughs> sixteen-bit <laughs> boobies. Hey, anyway, go ahead, Brandon. I was going to say, this is why the internet was born. They were like, okay, there's oh, yes. violence, but really, boobies. We can transmit digital pornography. And then somebody went, we're all going to be millionaires. <laughs> but you know that the, this is way before the internet, and it was like, because it's really primitive graphics. But it, yeah. it, it was totally gory and nasty. And I never, like... I was watching TV then following the news. I never heard of parents protesting this game. They were protesting fucking rock lyrics at the time. Those parents. Well, they, were, they were protesting Dungeons and Dragons at the yeah. time. Yeah. Hey. And somehow hey. this game was in not immune to it. And it was so. And not only Dungeons and Dragons, but like uh, role, live action role playing. What well, they call it something different now. LARPing. Um, LARP? LARPing. Yeah. But it was, before it was called LARPing. It was people are out there reenacting Dungeons and Dragons, and so they're all going to yeah. hell, and we need to put a stop to that. That well, was like around 1980. It's a gateway to Satanism. That's what yeah. Jack Chick comics. And, but we've learned actually from our, I think our second or third episode that the gateway to Satanism is the song "Rock Around the Clock." So just to oh, bring yes. that back into uh, focus. Yeah, that was when you had your seizure. You mean that day? <laughs> 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 nervous breakdown. <laughs> It's like my theories all were tied together is what happened. Right. But you get too close to the truth, man. Yes. And then that's when they come then you, you wind up in a uh, uh the the belly of a car called the beast. Oh no, you froze. Am I frozen? No. It's just him right now. That's Matt. The be belly of a car called the beast. I don't I'm not sure. He's talking about Christine by Stephen King. The, the car. Was the car? Did it have a name? Christine. No. Oh, the name was Christine. You're right. Yeah. But a car that is a beast. I don't know where he's going with that. I don't know. We may never know. That might be for, <laughs> forever. He's, he's gone. gone. He's gone. Oh my God, we can talk about Matt now. <laughs> So what's the I most saw, I saw you thing? retired. I saw you retired the cup and was just fucking straight out of the bottle. Is what? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm going full on to Shira Mafuni here. I wish I had the big jug so I could put it on my elbow, like in the Seven Samurai. Just oh. like, oh. This is nasty cold. It's like, it's the kind that's so shitty you have to heat it up. Yeah. Well, you're supposed to drink it warm anyway, aren't you? Or hot? No, no. Yeah. Like the really good sake is you're not. Like, because the reason why you heat up sake is because it's not that good. <laughs> oh. It covers the shitty taste. It kind of like the heat makes it like you don't. You can't tell as much. Yeah, sure. You just go. Which, oh God, that's that's hot alcohol. Which may be my Holocaust bourbon. I should heat up by that theory. What that it might the be. Hell bourbon. happened to me. Hot Holocaust bourbon. We're totally talking about you, Matt. My internet is going funky today. Oh my God, that's going to be my new expression when I see something crazy. I'm going to be like, "Hot Holocaust bourbon." What Holy the hell? Holocaust bourbon. bourbon. Hot Holocaust bourbon. Am I frozen again? Or am I being ignored? No, you're good. Okay, I just wasn't sure what, but what now was you going are in on. The right. I also have replaced my use of the R word with TikTok. 
Oh, well, that's good. You're totally yeah. TikTok. You, you sound like a TikTok right now. That, you are so TikTok right now. That is TikTok. <laughs> Well, I apologize for disappearing. So we're basically going to have what? Uh oh. <laughs> but not whatever you guys were talking about being recorded. What? Um, for whenever we finally put the show live. So I'll have to do some more serious editing, I suppose. Okay, oh, we had some another... bits while you were away. You did what? I told a hilarious story while you were away. Oh, yeah. What was the story, Greg? Oh, it was just, just it was delightful. Just so it was, it was the like story of the, the ferret and the pelican. <laughs> I, I thought that old Aesop's fable. The ferret. That sounds the like one of the, the early pelican. video games where like a ferret had to go collect his friend the pelican and take them to the island of candy. That was. Uh, they all learned a lesson at the end. <laughs> they all learned some kind of lesson. They did. They had to rescue a frog that was named Bobo. Apparently, at the end. So I wanted to say and the frog had just like a bad attitude when they got there and it was like calling the names going, why are you here? I was enjoying myself. How dare you come and rescue me, you stupid ferret, you stupid pelican. And then they, uh, they were, they left the frog there and they said, fine, rescue yourself. You stupid amphibian. You're really thinking about this slide. You should send us to rockstar games. They're <laughs> right. a big combine in the video game industry. Are they rockstar games? I thought yeah, they, they were, they were a, a drink. Oh, I don't know. Yes, he's right. They're big. Are they they're big? big. They're the I just know of like Blizzard Entertainment is what I'm familiar Blizzard's with. Blizzard's a big one, yeah. Blizzard, uh, I'm a Blizzard. And then there's really Lizard Entertainment, which is what we're actually owned by. It was so weird how Atari was so monolithic when we were kids. Like, it was just Atari. And then a television came out, but only like one kid on your block had a television. Was it like Yeah, because it was like a complicated freaking controller. Yeah, it had like all the buttons on it. It may have had one kid. And then I think it was Sega Genesis was like the next. No, no, no. no? It was the next step, ColecoVision, which was pretty fucking good at the, yeah. at the time. ColecoVision was a huge step where it's like, this Donkey Kong plays just like Donkey Kong. Almost like the arcade game. It was almost yeah. the same. The, the snozberries taste just like snozberries. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but ColecoVision was awesome. I don't know why it didn't keep going, but it seemed like America. That's the weird thing when you look at video game history. America was so uh -huh. many video games. And they just got tired of them for five years until until Nintendo came out. For some reason, America just was like, we love this. Now we don't for five years. And then we loved it even harder when it came back. Now everyone plays video games. 40-year-old men, 50-year-old men play video games every day. When we were kids, it was just kids play video games. Well, I was now overseas for two years. And... And again, I understand that these video games may have been at a bowling alley, but they were they were basically designed for men in the military, not for the kids of the people well, in the military. I games adults played, but like, for all, I don't know many of my friends' parents who were playing their Atari games. You know, like, oh, my dad will let me play Atari. He's playing Space Invaders now. It just seemed like... But now video games have become such an But that dad, that dad was super cool, and everybody liked it. And he probably yeah. also My dad still has never played a video game. <laughs> yeah. My dad plays, like, weather maps is what my dad plays. That's his favorite game. Where's the, game? Where's the hurricane coming from? No. <laughs> well, that's my brother. That was, he like, one of the it. things I had to do when I was in Florida is, like, I bought my dad a tablet, and the first thing he wanted was weather apps to be put. I'm like, on how many weather apps do you need? You know, he had like three weather apps that he, he cycled through. Is your dad like, Willard Scott? I don't know. I'm like, I just look out the window. That's how I know what the weather is. I'm like, yeah. Uh, I no, guess in I Florida, you have to be more aware of like hurricanes coming so you can like no, no, but that's put the boards think, across the windows. Old people There's... are fascinated by the weather. Old people are the main watchers of the weather channel. They watch it for hours. Like, oh, look at Iowa. There's a, a mild hurricane. Is that what they do, Greg? Yeah, this is what you know to be a fact that old people know, just I've watch seen, the weather for I hours. Old I hate, friends, there's old nothing relatives. worse than an Iowa hurricane too early in the Midwest hurricane season. <laughs> when the hurricanes spawn off the Great Lakes. Don't tell me about it. I've lived through those. <laughs> Nebraska has the worst hurricanes in the you're, world. You're oh. triggering me right now. <laughs> Bossy, Bossy of uh, 1957 was a Category 6 Midwest Did you say Bosnia, <laughs> Bosnia, Bos oh. Bossy, like the cat. Bozeman, Bozeman, Montana, Boise, Bozeman. Idaho. Wasn't that the uh, dead? We're guy? just doing a horrible stream of consciousness right now. 
All right. Well, that being the case, then we should bring in our uh, cooking segment for this. This is not a new cooking segment because, once again, I have people working on stuff around the house. I have people digging Do holes really in my yard. Pizza waspy. What's that, Greg? Do we really have to repeat these waspies? Yes. Yes, we have to. Just to, uh, I should have to... talked about this before the show. But I, I want to say right now, I'm going to get it. In the words of Waspy's cousin. Of rerunning, <laughs> rerunning Waspy soda pops. Yeah, I don't like reruns. Nobody likes reruns. Well, like you know, people kids. do. People watch them. That's how they get away with it on regular television. You we know. don't like reruns. No, people don't like it. It's not as good as a first run. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what. We have Sanchez Eldorado communicating. He says that, uh, good evening, fellas. Presidential SUV is called The Beast. Uh, in Portland, it's either raining or not raining. So that is his contribution. Once again, we wish help to work Steve on his own. He's right. interested in weather. You're right. You're right. The Sanchez El Dorado just proved your point, Greg. But I have to turn. I have to turn off the. Um, I have to turn off the music. Oh wait, you guys haven't been hearing the music for a while. It's just me hearing the music. What now. if I just make a new Wesley soda pop right now? Go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Do it. Food is freezing. Food is freezing. Food is freezing. With Waspy Soda Pop. Hey, everybody. My name is Waspy Soda Pop. Today we're <laughs> gonna make we're gonna make tit dumplings. And that's what, what what are they called? Tit dumplings. <laughs> tit, tit, tit dumplings. The dumplings that look like little tits. So <laughs> what you do is like normal, like when you make a dumpling, you, you know you get the flour and you get the the inside some maybe potatoes or some raspberry. But how much? You need specific amounts, Greg. Oh yeah, I forgot. Um, so you get uh, two pounds of flour, and you. I'm, I'm sounding like a Southern Belle. Okay. <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's appropriate for you. Now he's suddenly from Louisiana. <laughs> and then you drink a mint julep while you're cooking, and and then I do declare. Then then you get some you get some parsnips as the filling of the Dublin. I do declare. I do declare. Come here. Okay, I say, I say, boy. You get some, I say, I say, chicken hawk. You get some parsnips for the filling. But then, but then you buy, you buy cherries and you slice them up nice and thin. You know, nipply size thin. <laughs> and then once you make the nipple, you once you make the dumplings, you cook them in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, that is. Not Celsius, because that would be like the surface of the sun. And 400 degrees Fahrenheit, and then you cook them up. And while they're cooking, you, you know, take a crap or do play some horseshoes or do whatever you like to do. It takes a little while. Then you come back. You come back and you check the oven. And after done, you take the little slices of cherries you said, and you put them right on top. It's like little nipples. And then what you got there is little tit dumplings. They look just like little tits. Who doesn't like tits? <laughs> and so, and then you put it in your mouth and you suck on the cherry right before you put it in the mouth. You, oh, it's delicious. The cherry and the parsnip, the way they marry, the flavors marry. It's, it's delightful. I it's do not declare. quite. It's not quite a waspy soda pop recipe because those are all like edible food items that you're using there. I know. And then you put some ashes in it and some <laughs> dinosaur bones and you put a Martian Martian hemlock in it. And then... Martian hemlock. <laughs> if you Never don't really get the Martian hemlock, there's a link down below <laughs> where uh, one of our sponsors. Well, the way you said it, I thought you said Martian. Some <laughs> Martian hemlock. You want to get Martian hemlock, what you do is you go out to the end of your yard and yell out I'm not taking the vaccine. And then someone will come out and go, me neither. And then you go, do you know where I can get some Martian hemlock? They'll go, yeah, I got a whole container of it here underneath my refrigerator next to my flat earth compass. <laughs> there you get your Martian hemlock. That's how you do it. Because <laughs> everyone that is must queuing be, on this. Like, that must be where it grows up in Portland, I guess. <laughs> yes. Okay, I ain't doing it. I'm not taking it. So there you go. I, there you got your next nice if, if I get the Do vaccine, it. I for sure won't get the. I won't get sick. That's why I'm taking the vaccine. Oops. <laughs> Guess that didn't plan out. That didn't work. I'll get a booster. Oops. I got it again. <laughs> Thank God Pfizer made ten billion dollars, whatever the fuck it was. <laughs> 
Yeah, thank God for all the dead who they got to uh, test the vaccine on too. So anyway, moving along. Regular, let me just say I got a regular at the bar. He's a nice guy, but he refuses to call it the vaccine, the vax. I said, I got my vax. It's not a vax, it's a shot. He's like, because it doesn't stop you from getting it. Like a flu shot. Yeah. ideally stops you from getting the flu. Yeah. And I'm like, Mike, that's his name. He's a good guy. And I was just like, it keeps you from dying. I don't give a fuck what you call it. It keeps you from, yeah, I might get COVID, but I won't die. So. Yeah, I think, you know, that's probably a better um, term for it. You just call it a shot. Okay. Sure. But I yeah. mean, he was doing that skeptical thing. It's like, yeah, I don't care. Because technically, oh. technically it isn't a vaccine because a vaccine carries a small bit of the thing that it's protecting you against. Yeah, yeah. Whereas gives you a little all, dose. all the shots did not did not go that route. They went yeah. a new new route. Yeah, and I I don't think anybody expected that the quote unquote vaccine was going to cure anybody of the COVID or, no, or, no. or knock it well, out. Because, the worst part. because it yeah. is a coronavirus and the fact is the common cold is a coronavirus and that's never yeah. been able to been cured but you can lessen the symptoms so there you go it's for yeah. lessening the symptoms so regardless thank you brendan for taking us onto that track as opposed to maintaining the goddamn humor that we were going with for crying out loud I don't remember that it hey you made a bunch of money off of that i thought it was interesting i wasn't the one that did, that did the <laughs> out, of, out, of, out of thin air thing about the vaccine guy who was standing on the edge of the cliff i didn't realize i was going to touch a nerve by doing it i no, apologize it just, for see, that no, i don't give a shit i just thought it required a little bit of a uh, counterpoint it was a little <laughs> much it wouldn't be our show without a tiny bit of squabbling so there you go a i was tiny bit my, i was going to fulfill my role because i know chucklehead wasn't going to do it he'd be like yeah <laughs> i'll take six more boosters if you give them to me for free one at each eyeball because he's a fly anyway <laughs> anyway so all right gonna, what the hell were we oh we were talking about waspy soda pop is weird and how we to get martian waspy, hemlock then, yes then, then if you want to repeat your waspy go ahead no 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 put his face on while you're talking for whenever i do the editing i did the song though that did pretty good huh uh sure <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not like it's that great of a song to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> but notice i no. didn't do it at the end because i never liked that, that, that was the twice. sound that greg made as he tried to call hogs in before the next uh iowa hurricane came. <laughs> <laughs> he called to those for the next nebraska water spout <laughs> he called for those pigs <laughs> like his life depended on it and it did <laughs> Did you guys hear there's some dust devils in New Mexico right now? Well, that's normal, Greg. No, but there is yeah. an extreme dust devil warning. There's a warning on the weather service. The dust devils. Extreme that's, dust that's devil. Pedro, that's Juan. They're the dust devils. I know those guys. Yeah. They're like they're like knocking over cars and shit. The, the I hear they do devils. Tejano music, the dust devils. They, they have a food truck. <laughs> food truck. They're knocking over trucks. They're really bad dust devils. They do Italian Mexican fusion. Spaghetti yeah, they, tacos. They they get the <laughs> tomato sauce from uh Safeway and then they add oregano and salt. That's all they do. Oregano and salt. <laughs> and some chorizo, I think they would add to it as well. No. No, no chorizo. The, the oh, because it's, it's dust, it's dust this <laughs> one. Yeah. They just get a handful of dirt and they put that in a taco shell. It's your taco, you fucking gringo. Hey, your taco. Get out of here. Your taco. Your taco. Poppy is going to come back on and give you guys a hard time about these taco recipes. because Bring him. <laughs> Puerto Ricans don't make tacos. I know, Greg. That was what made it funny before. Oh. They're, they're the song. Oh, because you're baiting the you're Poppy. They're loud, but... Uh, of course I was. You were trolling Poppy, hoping he listens to our show. Oh. I'm not a troll. I'm a troll. Let's get it. You're a troll. What's that from a science You're a slatter. Troll? What's that? Something. Troll. That's a fishing term. So when you're Isn't trolling. That troll? well, that's A W. Yes, yeah, T R A W L. But people think it's trolling, trolling, but it's actually trolling. It's actually trolling? So I got yeah. it all wrong. Oh, okay. You're not the only one. Plenty of, plenty of people. But if you write a trolley or a it's kind of like when people hear the term at my beck and call and they think it's B-E-C-K-O-N. 
So beck and call. Or for all intents and purposes, people think it's intensive purposes. You know, it's one of those things that just gets repeated so many times. People think that's what it is when it's like actually voluptuous. Yeah, people or think right. voluptuous. or or disingenuous. Right, or like the vaccine is going to solve the problem. <laughs> or nuclear. Or the the Caucasus Mountains. <laughs> right. We did this the so repeated. already. Those the Congressional Black that? Caucasus Mountains. <laughs> They're really tall That's right. because black people are generally taller than white people. Oh, no. <laughs> Look at the basketball players. Sure. And the pygmies. Is that racist? Regardless. <laughs> There's more short white people. All the pygmy white people out there. there. There's a bunch. They all live in Florida. <laughs> there's a bunch. And they're all got yellow peel around Why are Latinos them. so short, though? Not my family, but. Uh, well, it has to do with the, the native people. In why, why are you asking these questions? This is not <laughs> a question. It, it, this is not an question. arena we need to why, be giving our lack of some, expertise. Why are in, some Greg? cultures like taller and shorter? Like why are, I, I've met so many Latin American It's guests called deoxyribonucleic that. acid, Greg. That's what it comes here's, down to. I here's here's why. the one. But here's the one. Spaniards why? Why? Because of God, Greg. God. Native Americans Greg. were in short. Spaniards were in short. Why, when they mix the two, did they become very short people? No, no, no. <laughs> it's because they're dwarves Central, Central, <laughs> Central Americans were short but here's the thing if you're going to go like okay well evolution should have dictated whatever whatever skin color why are people in the northern country so goddamn tall that doesn't make any sense at all because if you you go to like the uh, the the Inuit people and the Native Americans or Native people of Alaska they're all tiny they're short because you didn't want a big surface area you wanted to be able to hunker down in the cold but Norway, Sweden. Why are they all like six foot four? What the hell is that? It's more surface area to lose your heat. So you that's right. It's not. It's not. An cold people strategy. would be shorter. Right. They, they should be. That's surface area. That was actually the first video game, wasn't it? Um, <laughs> it was determining the, 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 the racial size of people based upon the surface area. <laughs> And to determine how soon they would die that was the best. That was when they were exposed to the elements. Well, no, it's like no, who it dies more, first of exposure? The Vikings more, or the Mayans? It was more of a risk slash Sims game where <laughs> you were given a certain set of colors and then you had to move them around appropriately without getting in the way of somebody else and then have everybody survive. <laughs> you know, I never played Sims, but I was always fascinated. Like, can you do anything on the Sims? Like, could you be like, oh, I'm going to. Uh, I don't know. Mutter? Son. <laughs> Sims. Not that I want to no. do that, but could you do that on The Sims? Could you no, do anything? I never, I never played that, and I don't think would you could do you? that because it depends upon the programming. And they probably yeah. wouldn't program in things that are illegal. Well, I know you can do things that, like, you could have sex with anyone in the game, and it's like... No, I don't know that you could do that, Greg. No. I, I, I hope they, you can't. I hope so, but I don't know. Have you Only Sims, the school Brendan? teachers you could have sex with. Brendan, nobody have you else. Sims? Multiple times back in the okay. 90s and, and then recently. Are there limits? Are there no, yeah. well, you got, you got your answer, Greg. He just said the words multiple times. I know, but I want to know are there limits? And he said yes. So yeah. that's what I want to know. Yeah, you can't There's jump only, to the moon either, Greg. You can't really you can't really control them like like you would control Mario. That's not how it works. Yeah. You kind of set up some tasks. It's more like one of those, like almost one of those text-based games where you would say, go left, go right, do this, oh, yeah. do that. So you would kind of give them a set of tests and they would kind of operate on their own. Like all of a sudden, if at nine o'clock they're supposed to go to work, they would just leave. They'll just get out the house and go wherever they're supposed to go. You didn't have to make them do that. Then they would just show up. And if you don't make them do something, if you don't give them a command like go eat or go to the bathroom, they'll go find something else to do. So you don't control them in a way like, and now you can you can make them go talk to somebody, and you can choose to talk, you know, flirty, but it doesn't mean anything. Other Will than, they die if you don't tell them to? Yes. Eat? Yeah, they can die. So, do you think a lot of people will say this, play this game? Like, I wonder how many people are just like, oh, I, I want to hurt people, but I don't <laughs> want to go to jail. I think, I think I think you go through that a little bit. Like when I when I played it with the first time, my kids, we did horrible shit. You know, like like literally like. Like family services came and took one of the kids away. One of them died in the kitchen, and never. <laughs> one of your actual kids was taken away by family services. Yes. <laughs> one died in the kitchen. 
one died in the kitchen. But anyway, so we just let it go to hell. One of one of the people just went crazy. It was just running around in circles. Um, <laughs> but after a while, you're like, okay, I think I've seen about as much of this thing that I'm going to get out of it this way. And then you start trying to build a world and, you know, whatever, you know. Did you guys ever play Sim City? Like no, but uh, before we get into the, the, the sim wormhole you're dragging us into, <laughs> Greg, um, Sanchez El Dorado did um, correct me regarding trawling because he says trawling requires a net. And then he says up in Alaska, you reach the point of diminishing return. So that's, uh, you know, Sanchez El Dorado chiming in. Um, With his to... quibbling. Thank you for quibbling, Sanchez Eldorado. <laughs> exactly. We don't get enough from Max. Now we have like a North Dakota. <laughs> oh, but he's quibbling with me, you see. That's the. Yeah, but now you shared it. So now we have more quibbling. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's a double quibble. Double All right, quibble. so let's let's continue on with our, our normal segment that we have not oh, got into yet. Exactly. How can you forget, Greg? How I don't know if can... I can do this with Saki. How can you forget? It's... He has an opinion, may not always be right. He's a real fake lawyer. He's old and he's white. Ask him a question, cause he's a good egg for bogus advice. Ask Greg. Ask Greg. Ask Greg. I never noticed how she said he may not always be right. I've never been right once. No, you've noticed that before because you've commented on it before. Oh, I have? Yes, you have. So this is another moment where Blame you have the red. Sake. <laughs> I think it's not the sake. It's probably. I, really said that before. I never thought that. I never you noticed. Gave away the name of my screenplay. <laughs> Blame it on the sake. Yeah, I was starting with Michael Dude, Keane. No, no, Randy Quaid. <laughs> and it's actually a martial arts movie. It's changing it to blame it on the chop sake. <laughs> Randy Quaid. All right. And, uh, so, Brendan, yes. what do we have from the peanut gallery in terms of legal questions for Greg? Is there you can ask about Japan today because I'm, I'm ready. Japanese legal questions. Or one about The Sims and if Greg was part of The Sims. <laughs> I was part of Sim City. I was a great mayor. You were. I'm sure you were. Uh, you know, um, here's an interesting one. Uh, dear Greg, I know this really isn't your area of expertise, but I've been a fan of your show for many years. Thank you. I want to address the subject with you of bestiality. You've poked some fun at it in the past, uh, but it's a serious issue, uh, which I'm trying to legalize here in our great state of Oregon. Um, what advice do you have for me to get this measure through so humans and beasts can i'm not going to read the rest of that <laughs> well actually uh, love uh, love steve uh, you're an oregon resident i believe love like. steve no yeah he's not brendan is an oregon resident no no yet. no but He's got a couple of weeks person. before that happens, but yeah, uh, because I, I think this person hasn't been following the news. Like last year, we did pass the law. It was Maybe called this the is Richard, an old email. It was <laughs> called the Richard Gear Enactment. Oh it was, no! It was yeah. You know, we we already did that. Greg's, you haven't been following the news. Greg's favorite story. <laughs> but but technically speaking, technically speaking, is that the same thing in terms of? The alleged incident with Richard Gere. Yeah, the, that's in more the, like hide a hamster, Greg, as opposed to doing it with a hamster. Well, it's sexual. It's not consensual. The it's hamster. not. It's, yeah. The gerbil I, I, isn't consenting. The gerbil <laughs> dies. But I'm saying because I of think that, in any in any situation involving a gerbil in that regard, it's probably going to end up dead. Yeah. Unless happens, unless you're providing the services to the hamster. <laughs> it's like. Nicky, nicky, nicky. Yeah, yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> I suppose. I, I don't know what I'm saying. If, if you just want your hamsters to be happy. <laughs> that's nice. That's yeah. Little happy hamsters. There, there is like a when I used to own a dog, I'd put peanut butter on my dick. Oh, jeez. Oh, God. You know, there's, like, a person at, there's a person at SeaWorld whose job it is is to the, the, the animals there. Well, there's that whole like in animal husbandry, right? There's the guy who has to like. 
Is that being a husband? Is that what a husband is to you? <laughs> it's his animal husband. I'm just saying in Oregon now, it's totally legal anything. Like, we can take all the drugs we want. Any drug is legal. Mm-hmm. And any animal you want to fuck, you could fuck a mosquito if you could figure out how to do it right now. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, letting, him, I'm letting him know. He, Let he Steve be... know that yeah, bestiality is A OK in your book. Yes. Oregon no is, like, is like Amsterdam. It's I, can't Amsterdam. Wait to, I can't wait to get there. It's Hamsterdam here. You can Amsterdam. fuck anything, including a hamster. You can, I wouldn't do that. No laws. I wouldn't do that. Or I a ham, certain. for that matter. Maybe. Maybe. I, I woke up this morning before work. I had a little time. I was smoking a cigarette outside. I saw a squirrel. I fucked it. <laughs> a cop went by and he said, good on you, buddy. <laughs> is that what he did? Jeez. Tipped his hat. Tipped his hat. <laughs> day, In the throes of it with a squirrel. Yeah. That's a nice squirrel. Did he, did he like it. Doctor Who teleport out of England somehow? From 18. What Doctor Who? How did Doctor Who get fucked? I don't know. He had to come on a time machine somehow. No, Oregon is like Doctor Oregon what? Is, is like a Mad Max Free Road over here. We got no laws. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. It's it's like um, wavy gravy is our spiritual governor, basically. Even though he's another dead, callback for Greg and wavy gravy. I love wavy. That's the funniest name ever for a hippie. But yeah, you can fuck anything you want here. Really? Okay, good. I, okay. I got it. I I responded to the young man, especially the economy. That's yeah, something I, you can definitely do here. I fucked an avocado man. yesterday, even vegetables. Those okay. with or without wheelchairs. I think we should move on. Either a question or something else. Well, I think it's time to go into our newest segment because we're definitely hitting the uh, about the one hour mark here. So this is what? a brand new segment, everybody. This is not something that has been um, shown or seen anywhere in this world, but it's going to happen today. So let me make sure I have the sound on this time so that uh, it's all done appropriately. Here we go. This is the last word with Brendan Haggard, Peter Gandon, Nerd, Sid. What was that? <laughs> jump, jump, jump. <laughs> wow, well, I'm glad. I'm glad my segment is the acid trip part of it. <laughs> <Yeah. show. laughs> Like you record that in your bathroom, man. Yeah, so, now I'm just speaking in my true native <laughs> alien language, Greg. What did you say at the end? What literally? What did you say? All, all that is is me just yeah. reversing what I said at the beginning. Oh, okay. So I just I played. I just hearing, reversed the thing hearing. in the beginning, and I added some echo to it. Because I had bad hearing, I was like, "Am I not hearing?" I thought saying? something was glitching. I'm like, "Oh wow." Well. well, yeah, something obviously was glitching, which is the guy who created the thing. So. For those of you who are just tuning in and you don't know anything about this because this is a brand new thing, this is the last word with Brendan, where Brendan gets the last word. So, Greg, what does Brendan get to have the last word about today? If six were nine and seven and seven is on a purple haze, <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I was just going along with the psychedelic thing, but you were all hippied out there. Uh, that intro was very hippie. Rubber solely is very Hendrixy. Okay, Just give him a freaking topic. I'm sorry, you 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 threw that on us. We had no idea that. Dude, I gave you the it. entire hour to think about it. I know, but no, I, I got nothing. Thing. Throw me we had no ball. idea there'd be this hippy dippy. <laughs> Co- Beatles late late era Throw Beatles the ball thing going on. Should nine? I play it again? Should I get play it again nine? so you get it out of your system? Number nine. Number nine. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing. Okay, we're good. Okay, no, you don't have to play again. No, no, let's do it again. Oh, this no. is the last I word. Brendan Haggerty. Peter Gandon. No talent. Sin. No, it sounds like no talent. Sin. <laughs> no talent. Sin. Brendan Haggerty. <laughs> gives All right, free Brendan, money to eat. Give him a topic to have the last word about, Craig. Brendan, I'm curious to what you think about. The Secret Service agent yesterday during the January 6th hearings, who said that when he got in the car with Donald Trump, he grabbed the wheel because he did he wanted to go to the the Congress building. 
Is that what it's called? The Congress building? <laughs> yes. I guess. Yes. Let's just let's just go with that. Oh the Congress Purveyor of I think Capital C, Capital B. Congress and stuff. I think yeah, it's he's gonna go to Congress, Congress and stuff and he grabs the Congress it. hut. Congress yeah, building. And, uh, and then and then so the guy grabbed his arm to stop him from doing a very dangerous thing. And then Trump grabbed his neck. Trump attacked Trump. his own Secret Service guy. Trump attacked his own Secret Service guy. Did you read about this, Brendan? Do you know about what I'm talking about? Matt told us about this. Well, okay. he didn't grab his neck. And he, he I thought did. he said he grabbed his trachea. No, or... they put his he put his hand on his clavicle. It was basically clavicle. The... That's yes, right but it didn't say that. that he grabbed it. It's just they put his hand on it. It wasn't the person wasn't an eyewitness, so that's why it's okay. a little you know hard <laughs> to know okay. for there certain that this is what happened. Oh, what? So wait a minute. So so my question is, what the fuck is that? The question. <laughs> Here's the situation. What the fuck? So yeah. So in other words, I guess what Greg is asking is like, what's your opinion about Trump? Trying to take the steering wheel out of the Secret Service. Or are you uh, even person's... surprised? <laughs> just hearing well, that story. Okay, okay. So, say, well, this is just for Brendan to like give his his final statements yeah, yeah. about Greg. So, so not many questions. One, the first thing, it sounds suspect to me because Donald Trump doesn't have that kind of fucking testosterone in any part of it in his whole body. They burned it down to the ground. He's not that fucking tough. I watched when there was like, there was a video of him when he was president and something happened. That dude couldn't have ran off the stage, got tackled by his people faster. He is in no way that much of a man to do something like that to a trained fucking killer, nor would they let the president do that in any sort of threatening way other than him just touching it, which could have happened, but who the fuck knows. The real interesting part is how much time do we feel as a country or as a party, as Democrats, do we feel we should devote to going over and over and over and over all the dumb shit Donald Trump did? Do we get our jollies out of this? Are we solving any problems? Have we passed $15, minimum, $15 minimum wage? Have we have we done anything about health care? Have we done anything about college debt? Have we done anything? No, but we've spent a ton of time talking about Donald Trump, who hasn't been the president in a long time, and he only is alive because we keep him alive, and he only won because we fucking made him a demon because we thought there's no way he could beat anybody. He could. There's no way he could beat Hillary. That's a joke. And, well, we, you know, what happened. So... Can, I think it's can we a, have a new segment called Last Word? Second to Last Word. Because okay? <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot to tear apart about that all right well th that's not the the topic for today Greg. I know, that I'm is the last word with brendan Haggerty. so um just for the sake of doing it again i'm gonna do it again just because just because i like it that's why because you're on LSD. this right? is the last word with brendan Haggerty. <laughs> Unleash your mind, relax, and flow. A no down. talent sip. That's all I can hear now. Every time I hear that. It all right, maybe I'll, I'll get rid of the second half where I've done it in reverse. But I was maybe, trying. Maybe, to... maybe it needs some sort of lightning round, like explosion, like <laughs> the last word with Bernard Haggerty. Well, <laughs> that that literally was created ten minutes before the show started. Why I'm did like, you going, think All right, I'll put a little thing really thing. fast. What was that, Greg? Why did you think a trippy thing like that would be necessary? Why? Why did that pop in? None of the I'm things I do are was... necessary, Greg. They're just something I do. What, I they, know. It's basically the concept of you just throw spaghetti against the wall and see if it'll stick or not. You know. It either works and or it doesn't work. It doesn't I am people. I am willing. I am willing to to make mistakes, Greg. Okay. I I don't have to pour over it's things. A mistake, man. It's kind I don't of have to pour over mistake. things for minutia to ensure that they're absolutely perfect. I'm willing to go. Well, it'll work or it won't work. So we just try it out. It doesn't work. That's why Darling Matt had one shot and it was gone. It's like, oh, that didn't work. So we got rid of that. So hey, that what wasn't is that bad? Yeah. What did we determine that didn't work on? Uh, it didn't seem yeah. like it worked. I didn't. I guess the darling math thing because Greg kept saying he 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 hated the name. Oh, yeah. oh, because because I influence you that much. You know, I take other people's points of view. Dry I, ass I assess when I realized that I wasn't a huge fan of it either, so I got rid of it. Okay, but I mean, we, we can still leave the segment. I just Greg. haven't come up with a better title. That's Think all. how bad all the Ask Greg seg segments have been. And they, every single Ask Greg segment, Greg, is phenomenal.
Every single one. And I we've learned and we've learned time. that the last word with Brendan is also phenomenal. So that's not going away either. Yeah. <laughs> but we if gotta we have, like, But I will have to edit the intro a little bit. We do have to have the last, last this guy word for break, you know, every yelling at me. What? I don't know. You guys are talking over each other. I didn't hear what either of you said. Sorry, I'll shut up. Nope. <laughs> okay, now both of you won't talk. Anyway, all right, well, our client for today has been Video Games Killed the Pinball Star. We didn't really get into the whole pinball issue too much, but basically, pinball lost its popularity in the golden age of video games, and uh, that's kind of where that went. Um, uh, What else? We'll be back next week, and then about a week after that, Brendan will be in Oregon. Is what seems to be the case, and Greg will be in my kitchen. Will be in my kitchen on a milk crate, milk carton. (laughs) One or the other. Where is he? Where did Brendan go? I, I'm building. I, I've, I've pushed a chair up against where people come upstairs. I'm trying to just make it through. You're not like putting a bunker in place there. No, no, not, not yet. <laughs> I mean, did you tell Brendan go. about uh, Sam? I have Sam's information. Okay. Did, did I tell Brendan about Sam? Uh, like in the whole thing. What? Not to, like, okay. Oh, I know let's, this guy. Let's, talk about, that. let's talk about Let's tell him everything let's, about Sam. Let's, <laughs> let's move on. Let's just move on. We can the talk gerbils. about that after, we, can, about after, the the call, after we hang up the call. I, I'm assuming <laughs> we've stopped recording. No, we haven't yet. This has been the Law Offices of Quibble Squabble and Bicker. Your consultation with the law offices of Quiddle, Squabble, and Picker has ended. You may pay your retainer at www.qsblah.org. Please exit to the right of the water cooler and grab a candy from the front desk. We hope to see you again soon, but you need to leave now. I said leave. Why don't they ever listen? Get out! Get out!